Okay, in this exercise, we're going to add another variable to our choropleth map. So I've started a new map project. I went into the Living Atlas and searched up health rankings. Um, the most current is from 2021. Obviously, this won't be a complete data set. You know, a lot of it is projected data. So you're welcome to work with 2020 if you'd like. Um, hit OK. You can probably double click on it to simplify this step, but it gives you different aggregation levels. I just go and remove the state and the country because those aren't very interesting to me. Okay, let's first look at the attribute table and take a look at what we have to work with. It turns out it's a lot, which is kind of fun and a little overwhelming. Um, so counties and then uh, You'll just take a look here. Premature death, um, usually broken down into multiple categories, um, sometimes race, sometimes age. Um, an easier way to look at this sometimes is to go by select by attribute and just add a new expression where object, but here's a list of the attributes we have to work with. So poor or fair, fair health. I want you to think about things that are already normalized, like percent low birth weight, or um, uh, variables that will have to be normalized by dividing by either the area of the county or the population of the county. So um, yeah, these numerators and denominators, I haven't read up on that to see what that is, but um, teen births, uh, how many mental health providers there are per 100,000 people in a county. Uh, percent of the population that gets a flu shot, percent of the children that are in poverty. So take a look here, there's a lot to work with. Okay, one of the maps um, that I got started with was comparing the percent of the population that excessively smokes relative to uh, the percent of the population that reports more than 14 days. Um, we'll have to take a look at it. I'm not sure over what period um, of poor health. So again, primary symbology, we don't want unclassed colors. Let's use bivariate colors this time. It asks you for your fields and gives you the option to normalize it right here in the symbology window. So if you had a raw count of something and wanted to normalize it by the county's population, you could do that right here. Uh, your classification method, and whether you want a 3x3 three three or a 4x4, four four, um, and then some great stuff to work with down here. So let's go ahead and plug a couple of those in. Oops, here's adult smoking, and in field two we'll put... Okay, well, I found the attribute I was looking for, but I had to go back to the 2021 data that I was originally working with. Uh, it turns out the variables aren't the same between the different years. So be aware of that. Um, I thought I was going completely crazy for a second there. And shockingly, it's the percent of adults reporting 14 more days of poor physical health per month. That's a lot. Nessie. Um, okay, so it's your job to uh, experiment and use the correct classification, classification method. Um, I'm here to show you about some map tricks. So here we're showing the percent of the population, um, and you're going to want to read up on what these mean, and I'll give you a link for that. Um, the grid size. Let's just, for fun, make it 4 by 4 and then just notice how many options you have. Uh, for color schemes. Okay, so taking a look at the histograms again, where's the average? What's your distribution like? This is quantile, so we're going to have the same number of observations in each class. Uh, and here is the second field. This is uh, the poor health, and then the yellow is smoking. Um, it builds uh, a legend for you here. There are ways to change the legend. Um, orientation, for example, you can make it a diamond with the low at the top, okay? And you can, like I said, change the way it's labeling and change the labels themselves. Um, another thing you can do is, so I was looking at this and I was thinking, huh, 
Okay, that's a pretty interesting pattern. Um, here we have, these are the areas of a lot of excessive smokers and um, a lot of the population reporting poor health, more than 14 poor health days. Here we have relatively um, excessive smokers in yellow, but not reporting poor health days. And here we have low levels of smoking, but people reporting a lot of poor health days. It's just sort of interesting. And then up here, just this whole band that's a, a mismatch. Um, yeah, crazy uh, consistent sort of trends, which I wasn't expecting to see. But we have, again, the problem with choropleth is we have all these tiny little um, counties, and then we have these great big counties. Well, so what's going on in this county? Do we Is it fair to have this distribution? Is this a high, high, high population county or low? It's probably a low population. That's why it's so big. So one thing you can do is if you go to the second tab in the symbology, you can vary the transparency based on a field. And so if we could find a population field, total county population. All right. So there's population, and notice that it's applying um, a range of transparency here, the low numbers and the high numbers. So um, the, the high populations, if we just made them a tiny little bit, you can see the, the distribution here is really weird. So I was going to go ahead and try normalizing. And getting a density of population doesn't change much. And so maybe what's happening here is that the, the, the really dense counties, which makes sense that they're in these urban areas, um, aren't showing up because of our base map. So we could change the base map out to a dark one, which is going to allow these um, dense counties to pop. And what that does is draw our attention to the places where there really are a lot of people and takes away some of these really large, uh, low population counties. Not that they aren't important, but we're going to see um, the most people in the counties that are really visible right now. You know, and maybe that's, maybe that's um, one reason not to normalize. You know, maybe we don't need to normalize it by area if we're going to use um, transparency to normalize instead, if that kind of makes sense. Let's just see what happens. Okay, you decide if you want to try, um, you know, symbolizing or weighting, I guess, the visualization against population density or margin of error or something like that. It's up to you. Um, just know that uh, you're gonna, if you're using transparency, you'll wanna be careful with your base map to make sure that the colors of the base map aren't interfering with uh, what's showing up with the transparency. Okay, so I switched this back to square. What I'd like to see you guys do is um, give me your best shot with this um, legend. And I think you can do some stuff with arc, but I don't, I don't think this is going to make a very nice um, legend the way it is, even if you go in and, and trick this stuff out. This legend is so important. It needs to have, for full transparency, labels on the classes. These classes look like, what are the values? High to low is not enough. Um, I also don't like the way these are detached from and kind of linear where this isn't linear. So what I'd recommend doing is go into PowerPoint and take a screenshot of your legend grid. You can blow it up on your screen to keep the resolution um, better than this one is. Uh, go into the histogram of the symbology and grab your distributions. You might be working with a data variable that's really um, highly skewed. You're gonna to wanna to show that. This gives us the transparency of what the classes look like. It also gives you the values so that you could just you know, put the label right here on your grid. Um, you can still have low to high, but you need to give it some context. 
including the min and max. I like that the average is in there and you can pull those from the properties. You can look at the mean and get the actual um, value for the average. So I would recommend doing that work in PowerPoint if that's your thing, or you can do it in Illustrator. I don't really care. Um, but you know, I can go in and insert text now and I can control the font size. I can control um, all sorts of labeling options. So that's what I want you to do. Then you can export this finished legend image um, as a PNG and reinsert it with your map. I think the map is important. It's going to show us spatial distributions, but this legend contains everything. This is, this is the, the meat, right? So you're going to want to spend time making the legend look incredible and then build a layout that balances the spatial distribution with critical information about what you're showing us. All right, that's the exercise. Uh, questions, let me know.